are going to talk about attracting and identifying butterflies that we find here in our area. So a lot of times people ask, what can I do to attract butterflies? What can I get them to do to come to my yard? Uh, it's pretty simple. Well, you want to start by planting flowers that attract butterflies. Here are four examples that I've had really good luck with. Salvia, zinnias, penthas, and lantanas. Today I'm gonna, we're going to talk about the zinnias for sure. But salvia also, these are also uh, good hummingbird uh, attractors too. Okay, so we're going to talk about a little bit about zinnia. So you can also plant uh, the ever famous butterfly bush. And if you really want to have, attract uh, monarch butterflies, plant milkweed. So things you need to remember when you're deciding to attract butterflies and build yourself a, a butterfly garden. You want to choose a sunny site. Provide nectar sources from early spring to late fall, the continuous bloom. So like when you plant one plant and it stops blooming, you should have another one just fixing to start blooming so that you have a continuous bloom. You want to plant a diversity of native flowers. They love red, yellow, pink, orange, and purple flowers that are flat on top or they have clusters. Okay. Um, you want to provide a host plant for caterpillars. Like, for example, the milkweed is a host plant for the uh, monarch butterfly. So if you have milkweed in your flower garden or in your butterfly garden, then you're probably going to attract monarch butterflies. And each butterfly has its own specific uh, uh, host that plant that it likes. And right, you also want to make uh, puddles. Um, they like to, that's how they get their, uh, their water. Um, but you can take sand, coarse sand, and put it on, uh, uh, on the ground. And that sand will hold that water. Um, you want to keep the bird, bird feeders and bird baths away from your butterfly habitat. Because hmm, they're predators to our butterflies and caterpillars. Um, so you don't want to feed your birds in your butterfly garden. You also want to provide like a flat stone for butterflies to rest on and, and bask in the sun. And most of all, don't use pesticides because even though butterflies are insects, they are not pests and we do not want to uh, kill them. So I'm going to show you how I prepared for my butterflies. Okay, so I chose a spot of ground there. Um, this is before I did anything to it. Uh, it is sunny. Right now it's kind of half shade, half sunny. So I dug it up, I tilled it, I used my tiller, and um, then I, I made it smooth. So um, actually those pictures are reversed. <laughs> but I tilled it up and then I made it smooth. Then I planted them. Planted two rows. I planted a row of sunflowers and a row of zinnias. Then I had to water it, okay? I put a, a sprinkler hose uh, down, and there it is being watered. You can see the rainbow. And they grew. Zinnias are in the front. Uh, they don't grow as tall as the uh, sunflowers. Sunflowers are near the fence because they grow taller. And they grew. And they grew. So, um, those are my zinnias there on the uh, left and the sunflowers on the right. The sunflowers hadn't started blooming yet. So I want you to look at these two pictures. It's really cool, okay? So these pictures were taken on the same day. The one on the left was taken at 9 o'clock in the morning. And you can see by the yellow arrows the way the sun is being down on it. And notice how they're, they're facing towards the sun. Now, the one on the right was taking, taken at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, the sun is not quite as bright. It's a little cloudy. You can see the clouds up there. But you can see how the plant has turned. This is all in the same day and the same patch. This is called phototropism. Photo means light. Tropism means to turn. So plants 
use phototropism. They turn toward the light. Okay, you can you can experiment with this with a a, a plant in your window. Um, you can turn the plant so it's not uh, it's away from the window, and then um, make sure it's in the sun, and the plant will start to turn. Now it doesn't go whoop. No, it takes its time. So phototropism that has nothing to do with butterflies, but I just thought it was really cool. So what have I seen in my flower garden? These were actually uh, taken, pictures taken in my flower garden. This is a zinnia on the right and a, a sunflower with a cute little bee on it on the left. All right, so we'll start off with the first one we see is uh, the actually the Florida state butterfly. It's the zebra longwing. On the left is the uh, larva stage or the caterpillar, and on the right is the adult version of the Florida longwing. On um, the maypop, uh, it's a passion flower that um, that's their host plant. So that is the zebra longwing. Pretty little interesting story. I don't ever remember seeing one of these until just a few years ago, um, but um, I think they've kind of migrated north. Um, but this was made the Florida State uh, butterfly in 1996. The next one is one you see quite often. It's a Gulf fritillary. Okay, um, it looks a lot like, kind of like. Uh, uh, the monarch has the same colorations, but it, but the patterns on the wings are totally different. Um, so these are ones that I've seen in my garden. I actually took the picture on the left uh, on one of my zinnia plants. Next one is the black swallowtail. Beautiful, beautiful um, uh, butterfly. They're pretty big, and you notice that the the on their um, they get the from swallowtail is the uh, tail on their wings. See the larva stage over there on the left. Next one is the long-tailed skipper. These are really cute uh, butterflies. They actually are blue and, and kind of brownish gray. Um, but if you look at, a, at them from the side, you can't see. Uh, the blue part until you're looking on top from the top and down here where I'm covering up is um, the actual larva. All right, this is a this is called a variegated fritillary. This is uh, a rel close relative of the Gulf fritillary that we saw before. But now that little larva, hmm, I, mm -mm, I don't like it. It's kind of scary looking. And so I have to bring myself, I cannot kill them. I have to remember that they turn into these beautiful butterflies. So that's a variegated fritillary. And then the cute little yellow ones that you see all the time are little sulfur butterflies. Uh, some of them are um, just called sulfurs. Um, but these are the examples that I found um, and the larva in the center. Cute little caterpillar. This is a pretty cool one. It actually looks like it has eyes. Uh, this is called a common buckeye. Uh, you would think it was maybe a moth because it doesn't have those bright colors, but it's not. It's a butterfly. Um, and this is this one is kind of beat up. Um, you can see where the wings are are kind of tattered. But uh, like I said, I did see did take this in my uh, zinnia garden. And there's another one of those larvas that I just don't know that I like, but I won't squish it. Then the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail is a big butterfly. Uh, you see this one a lot as well. Um, and then you have the larva over to the left with funny looking little eyes, which are not really eyes. So there you go. What can you do to start attracting butterflies? Plant you some flowers and start looking. Okay, there's a lot of butterflies out there uh, this time of year, and you just have to have to prepare for them. So plant you some milkweed, some lantanas, some zinnias, some pentas, um, and not only are you beautifying 
uh, your yard. You're also attracting pollinators and those pollinators also include bees and butterflies and hummingbirds and those are all examples of pollinators. So, are attracting butterflies today? Thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Thank you.